the dreaded doors of a control panel. My God, do I get scared when it comes to marking out and drilling and laying out these doors. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it so you don't make the same mistakes that I've made before and hopefully you never have to order a new door because you've messed something up. So let's get into it. So as you can see here, guys, I'm just going over all of the holes um, the large ones and the small ones and center tapping or center dotting, however, however you want to refer to it. So we've got a good solid indent for the pilot drill to start off in. So yeah, as you can see, center tap, center dot and a hammer. And it's just a matter of finding the center of all of these holes, the large ones and the smaller ones. So yeah, just making my way through doing that. So yeah. As mentioned, next bit is the pilot drill. So this is one and a half mil that I'm gonna go in with first before drilling out the main hole size. So you can't really see it here when I play the video, but as I mentioned earlier, I'm angling the drill and the drill bit to find the perfect center if the center tap is slightly off center i'll sort of move the drill and manipulate that center hole um, to the center or as best as i can anyway so yeah pilot drilling all of the corners of those plates and the centers of those 22 mil holes for the cam switches and indicator lights so yeah just to go back a step guys you can see here this is what the center taps look like pretty self-explanatory so here you can see on the smaller holes like this one for example it's pretty much bang on but i would be angling the drill slightly just to make that more central whilst doing the pilot hole so yeah just using standard drill bits nothing special and yeah this is what it looks like when all the holes have been pilot drilled so yeah let's just finish off that drilling for the pilot holes so yeah the next step guys is the 3.2 mil drill bit. So for the actual hole size of the corner of the plates. So yeah, as you can see, drill all of those out first. And those holes are for these snap rivets, the three mil snap rivets that you can find on the parts, hardware and components list. And I've just got these from RS, but this gives you a good idea of what they look like. So yeah, and then once you push them in, this bit here expands and holds that rivet within that hole. So these are three mil and we're drilling at 3.2. So there's that bit of clearance to get the rivet through the plate and then obviously into the enclosure door. So yeah, do all that clear all the swarf away. So yeah, as you can see here, the next bit now is drilling out the larger two 22 mil holes for the indicator lights and cam switches. This is what I'm using here, obviously a drill, uh, an Armeg or Starrett hole saw. Those are the two I'd recommend using. And then very important guys to use some cutting oil or cutting fluid. So I just use some WD-40 specialist cutting oil and using this cutting oil is just going to help the hole saw cut a lot better and also prevent it from going blunt and extending the life of it so yeah the the hole saws that i've had last a long time because i always use them with cutting fluid and also the technique that i use is i don't just go full pelt through the door i sort of ease on and off the pressure as I'm going through and that allows the swarf to clear and also more cutting fluid to sort of get in to the teeth. Yeah, it just makes for a nicer cut and yeah, prolongs the life of the hole saw. But obviously it does get a little bit messy, hence why I brought out the kitchen roll and gloves. <laughs> so I started off by going through the holes all the way and then I decided I'll use the smaller drill within the center of the hole saw first and again kind of do a pilot hole and then go back and do the actual hole hole saw the 22 mil hole so that's what I'm doing here clear away the swarf and then yeah go back and do it properly 
with the cutting fluid and the actual hole saw. Yeah, and then once that's done, it's obviously just clearing all the crap away um, and then just giving it a good old clean with some methylated spirit and um, yeah, lint-free cloth or a rag, but you just want to be careful not to scratch the paintwork, certainly on the front with dragging bits of swarf around. Um, so just be careful of that. So yeah, just some photos of what it looks like when I'm using the cutting fluid. Yeah, I just squirt a dollop around each hole saw. There you go, that's what it looks like. Be sure to wear eye protection. Certainly if you're not using cutting fluid, because I've had it before, even using glasses, where swarf kicks up and has gone in my eye before. So I choose to use goggles, much safer. Um, and yeah, my nice dustpan and brush here for clearing away the swarf. Oh, and as you can see here, I've added in a screwdriver because what you'll find is the section that you cut out occasionally gets stuck in here. So you just need to shove a screwdriver in one of those holes just to pop it out. And then, yeah, final go over with a clean cloth, or relatively clean cloth, lint-free, microfiber, whatever you want to use. And yeah, just go back over it with methylated spirit and give it a final clean. So onto the deburring, guys. And you can see this first bit, I'm just going around with the drill and a countersink and just taking the slight edge off the small 3.2 mil holes. So yeah, you can either use one of those twisty countersinks or a bit that you can put in a drill. Obviously quicker just to put it in a drill. So then yeah, as already mentioned guys, just go through all those 22 mil holes and uh, yeah, get the deburring tool and go around them. Just be careful on this face. Um, you don't want to slip and scratch it. Um, yeah, and then it's just a matter of cleaning it all off, getting those marks off and uh, yeah, then you're ready to go. Thank you.